we want to hammer home purpose so much so in the very beginning, but people are really not going to part with their dollars just because of your purpose, because then that's just a charity. What's going to happen is they're going to be attracted to something. They're going to want it for some reason. An influencer wears it. Everybody's wearing it. It's a trend. It meets a need, want, desire, or solves a problem. And then they're going to feel better about themselves because of the mission behind the business. Hi, I'm Jacqueline Snyder. And this is the Product Boss Podcast. I've helped launch and grow thousands of product-based businesses, even one of my own. And over the last 20 years, I've seen behind the scenes of businesses just like yours. Whether they are makers, manufacturers, artists, or food and beverage businesses, I have spent so many hours studying it all. I've discovered what makes them successful. What are mistakes they could avoid? How did they turn an idea into successful business? and what are strategies they have used to make more sales and be discovered by more customers. This is what this show is all about. Whether you're just starting out or you're looking to become a million dollar product boss, I'm here to give you the permission to chase your dreams, no matter how big or small. All you need is the right mindset, a little courage, strategy, and support, and you too can be the next million dollar product boss. Let's do this. When it comes to owning a product-based business, your slow seasons are meant for you to be working on your business instead of working in your business. That's why now is the perfect time to focus on making sure your business runs as efficiently as possible. Finding the right resources to make this happen can be difficult, but my friend, it doesn't have to be. Thanks to Sales Hub from HubSpot. With this all-in-one platform, you can easily manage your customers, increase visibility, and dig deeper into your data with advanced reporting capabilities to help you know where to focus in your business. You know I'm all about focus over here. Plus, it's powered by AI. So you and your team, if you have one, can spend less time on administrative tasks and more time on what matters most, connecting with and taking care of your customers. With Sales Hub, closing deals is no big deal. Head to hubspot.com slash sales to try it for free. Hey, hey, product bosses. Okay, so welcome back to another behind the scenes coaching session. I love that you are all loving these episodes. I am seeing the reviews that you're leaving. I am getting the messages that you're sending me on Instagram. I'm just so glad that they're helpful to you. And so we are going to keep them coming every week because it seems like something that has just had such an impact on so many of you. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So today I am talking with Tisha Trapp. She is the owner of her self-branded jewelry business. Now, she sells beautiful one-of-a-kind bracelets with a purpose behind them to celebrate the unique and individual qualities of those with autism, as well as embracing each person's distinct personalities. Now, she has a beautiful product and rave reviews, but she's just not converting as much as she'd like. And her new subscription offering hasn't taken off yet. We're going to take a look at her website, her brand, and her messaging and find out if her mission is resonating with people outside of those in the community with autism. So let's dive in. So tell me a little bit more in in your words about your business. Okay. So I originally wanted to start like a jewelry company. I was making the jewelry as like gold filled pieces stuff that you can find at any boutique. I decided in April, I was playing with these like these little square rectangular beads. They were real unique. I saw them online. I ordered some and I just started playing with those. And when I made one bracelet, I was like, oh my gosh, this is my Parker. So I have a five-year-old who's autistic. And I, when I was arranging the beads, I was thinking like, I was trying to decide, do I want to make them a pattern or do I want to just like randomly lay them out? And I thought it looked much prettier without a pattern. And so that whenever I had that kind of thought go through my mind, I was like, this is exactly how I feel about Parker. Like there's no rhyme or reason to a lot of the things that he does that would make sense to me, like a neurotypical human. And he is who he is. I remember hearing the quote, if you've met one autistic person, you've met one autistic person. They're all completely different. They're all different, unique, have their own characteristics. 
And so this bracelet just like immediately reminded me of that, those qualities about him. And so I kind of shared it on my Instagram with my friends and my family, like my personal Instagram, and they all loved it. Of course, they love Parker. They know me. They love my family. And so I moved it over to like, I made a jewelry Instagram account and started it on there and sold it to my friends and family. Well, through this account, I just began sharing more and more things that I was selling. And I was also sharing other small businesses. So when I would buy something from another small business, I would just kind of shout them out. I have no following, 100, 200 people, but things like that help other businesses grow, like other small businesses. So I had purchased this I think it was a t-shirt from another girl. She's actually local and she sells autism, like advocate type of t-shirts for autism parents. So I shared that and she immediately like reached out to me and was like, oh my gosh, I love your jewelry. I love that you're local. Can we collaborate? So we've been collaborating ever since and her community flowed over to me and I just began to really see a different picture for my company. And it really changed the direction, the brand. I made that one bracelet because it was personal to me, but I didn't realize like there is a community of autism moms out there who want to be seen. And so that's kind of where it just has blossomed from there. Like now that is my main, that's my main product. I don't really sell a lot of the gold stuff and I don't really care to, like it's still on my site, but I don't really do anything with it. I create collections for the autism bracelets and I release them seasonally and they wait for those, you know, to come in. I also do a different bracelet design every month. And so they purchase those from me as well, like the bracelet of the month. And then I just started a subscription plan with that. Okay. I love the story and I think your product is really beautiful and I think the story is really beautiful. And I like how you started with, if you've met one person with autism, you've met one person with autism because it's so clearly then also like in terms of this idea of like one of a kind bracelets, like each one is unique and you can understand that. I forgot to explain that. So every bracelet that I make is a one of one design. They're all handmade. So because there's no pattern to the bracelet, when I make them, I just kind of arrange them however I like in that moment. And that becomes the bracelet. So every bracelet is unique and different. And I think that aspect really connects with the moms as well, because they're like, oh, I mean, I get messages all the time. Like this bracelet just reminds me of my sweet boy. Every time I look, every time I wear it and look at it, like that type of thing. So they are handmade one of one, which is a little bit harder when you're reproducing them at a higher rate. But yes, that is like the main quality of the the bracelet. They're called one of a kind bracelets. Okay. So when you say one of one, like if I'm looking at the January reset bracelet, it's the bracelet of the month. Does that mean there's only one? And if I buy it, no one else can buy it? No. So if you buy the January reset bracelet, I will get the beads that represent that color palette and make you a bracelet. But each one looks a little bit different. Yes. Each one is going to be its own pattern, but the exact same color palette. Right. So like the winter pine, one of a kind bracelet, 10 of us can buy it. A hundred of us can buy it. It's just that they're all going to be unique when we look at them. Yes. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. No beads are like duplicated in the exact same spot, basically. Right. It's like however you're feeling while you're beating it. Okay. Exactly. So I think right there kind of the messaging to clean up the messaging in some sort of way. I know we call them like one of a kind bracelets, which I like, but it's also like each piece is unique. Cause when you said to me the story of like, they're one of a kind and it's one of one, it may be interpreted that there's only one. And if I don't buy it, it's sold out and it's not going to be there versus each one has a variation. So you're buying the green and white bracelet, which is like the winter pine one, but that there are enough. It's just each piece is unique in its own. So I think just cleaning up the language a little bit around it so that it's very easy to be like, you can buy these. It's just, yeah. It is in the product description, but I do agree. Like it needs to be like an easy one liner that I can repeat often and kind of put everywhere. So people understand. Yeah. I wonder if instead of one of a kind, it's like each piece is unique. There might be other places that we can look to that every single one has a bit of a variation due to the creation of it. Because I wonder if in the product description, it says winter pine, one of a kind bracelet. And I'm just curious if it needs the one of a kind part of it, or if it's just called the winter pine. So the general consumer 
is going to discover your brand and they're going to like it or they're not going to like it visually, or they're going to discover it from the story and meaning behind it. And then love that the product meets that need or the representation of what they wanted to represent because your product is beautiful. So it can stand on its own as just jewelry, or it can have this deeper meaning of kind of the conception of it. So I think it's like broadening it out and bringing it in where it's this idea of like you get to buy the bracelet, but each one is unique in its own. And I just don't know if it needs to be in the product description, if that makes sense. Okay. I usually, I say usually because now I'm trying to remember. Like anytime I talk about the bracelets on Instagram, it's the one of a kind bracelet. And then in packaging, obviously it's on the card and that's what will sell in a shop as well. So like If I'm shopping for a gift for a friend, I might buy them a bracelet. It says one of a kind. And then on the back of the card, it has like a little description of why it's one of a kind. I'm trying to remember the right words that that are on the back. But it's something like one of one designs to represent the beauty in the autism community, but also the beauty in you as well. So there's like a short description on the back of the card. Maybe I'm just not consistent enough with it. I don't think it's that. Because of my confusion, I want you to know that not everyone is going to discover you from Instagram and have watched all the stories. So we can never assume that people have listened to every bit of education. So if it's one of a kind, when you go one of a kind collection, instead it might be interesting for you to say something about like, we're all one of a kind or, you know, like putting your messaging in a shorter amount of information on this page. So instantly I read a very short sentence and I understand what it means versus saying the one of a kind collection makes me think immediately if I know nothing else, there's one of a kind and there's only one. But if when you phrase to me like each of us is one of a kind, you know, or some sort of statement and then the collection is called the one of a kind collection, then you start to bring awareness to the naming convention of it. Okay. So I need to explain that one of a kind phrase a little bit more clear. Yeah. And so when we're using the word one of a kind, then it's all of a sudden, it's like, we believe that each person Mm, is one of a kind. Okay. I love that. And that's where I think if we can get a good hook or messaging quite quickly, then we don't have to explain one of a kind. And now we know one of a kind is a collection and not that the piece is one of a kind. Okay. No, I love that. That's so clear. Tisha's brand has a strong meaning behind it. She even believes it's central to her brand and business. But with that, it's essential that people coming across her website for the first time see that meaning reflected in the copy, the photography, and the product itself. If the meaning behind her product is going to be a selling point, it has to be known and it has to be clear. Also, calling them the Nutcracker Winter Pine silver bells will only make these ones be very specific for the season. Like if you did like a red and green, we might not be wearing red and green in other times of the year, but they're so beautiful that I wonder if there's a way to not give it such a specific holiday name because it's jewelry. If it was a scented candle as pine or a gingerbread candle or a scent, that would make sense. You know, another cool thing is your community could tell you the names of their children or people with Autism. Oh, that's a sweet idea. And then you could name them after people. That's really sweet. So those specific ones were the winter collection drop. So they were named tree. I think I dropped them in November. They're about to get taken off in February. And so there's going to be a new, a new spring line. But I will say to that point, I did not sell as many nutcrackers and when I think winter pines. Now, granted, those are red and green. And I don't think that color necessarily sells year round anyway. So yeah. I Green is actually a pretty hot color for the year. Red is specific. Like actually red would work for Valentine's Day. So for spring, red is actually a pretty appropriate color. And green is also like out of all these, I probably would buy the green. And I really like the silver bells. I think those two would actually be really pretty stacked together. I would just want you to explore, you know, when I had my cuffs company, I actually named after women I knew. So women that were like inspiring to me, women in my family. And so everything was like the Celeste cuff or the Sherry cuff or the Melissa cuff. So that's my first boss, my husband's grandma, and then my best friend sort of thing. And then sometimes it's easy to remember them based on naming. So it could be 
cool for you to bring your community in. And then they could share stories of either it's their children, their friends or spouses. And then you can create stories about it too. I'm definitely going to try that in April. It's Autism Awareness Month. And I can just kind of start maybe in March to ask for people's stories and kind of tell them the project. And then in April have a special drop that's And not that I'm only going to do it in April, but I feel like that's a great way to like start that type of process. And even now though, with your current product, if you want to reposition it, you can keep the same green, the same white instead of, you know, getting rid of them or things that did really well. You've already taken the photos. You've already beaded them. You already have like the product listing. So you could absolutely just change the naming convention so that they feel like they're just part of the bracelets. I know you're saying they're part of the winter collection, But there's some that you could probably drop. And then there's some that are really beautiful that you may want to keep going. Okay. So your questions that you had that you kind of wanted to cover were how to better convert on your website. You feel like you have decent traffic because of boosted posts, but your conversion rate could be better. Over the past 90 days, it's been 1%. The second thing you want to talk about was how to sell more subscriptions because you're selling the bracelet of the month. I just started last week. Yeah. Okay. Subscription boxes. So that's like a new thing too. Do you want to talk about website First, do you want to talk about yeah. product offerings? Yeah. All righty. So looking at your site, things that I like, I like that I, your logo is really clean. I like that you have the hero bar at the very top. I like that we see the bracelets as a stack. See the beauty, bringing awareness to the beauty and autism shop here, the story behind the bracelets. So you've got call to actions on the main image. Then we go into one of a kind collection. And I also like that it's a beautiful, clear shot of the product And then we can see it on the arm because people always want to see it being worn by a person. Bracelet of the month. We go into reviews for the girls who like to layer and we go through it. Where it's hard for me is when we get into the navigation because there's so much here. It's actually overwhelming to think, what do I want? Versus like a shop all or a drop down link of sorts when it comes to jewelry. Okay. Let's just go to like the beast that is Kendra Scott jewelry. The queen. The queen. (laughs) There's things about this that I want you to know are like next level. So you do not need to do it all. But if we just kind of dissect this page, you know, she has the top bar, which you have. She has her logo. She has a search bar, which is fine. But then we go into a really easy to navigate. It's in front of our face. Yellow Rose is the collection she just came out with. And then it drops down. We've got Valentine's Day because, you know, Valentine's Day and jewelry. But then she has new. Then she has jewelry. And then jewelry drops down. And I can shop by categories, bestsellers, collections. It just kind of gives more of a way to see it. And you can kind of see it across the top. But let's just say right now, so you have your mate. This is the hero image. And then she's actually showing you the categories again. So what happened in the navigation? She's showing it to you again. Okay here. Then this is a new collection that they're doing. So what I find hard right now with your site is that the way that the navigation here, it's almost like too many words and hard to read. So I don't know if you are going to have other products. I'm just curious about you having like a jewelry shop all new. And then if you're going to do bracelets, necklaces, earrings, you know, whatever it is, you can just have them run across the top versus being a drop down navigation. Okay. So earlier I had mentioned I wanted to take off the other gold filled jewelry and you'd you'd asked why do you think I shouldn't? I like I feel like it's just like it's just there. It's like it's not the main thing. But do I need other pieces that aren't the main thing? You don't. I think it's maybe more of a curation of the way that it is. So let's say there was a charm section, like maybe one okay. of your collections was charms. So it's almost this like separate. So it could be like bracelets and necklaces as separate pieces, but the collection is the charm collection. And then that is, you know, the bracelet and, you know, and then maybe there's like the word collection. So I think right now it's harder to navigate because if I land on your website, I know nothing but landing on your website. All I see are these and Mm -hmm. all I see are these. And there's no way for me to even decide or discover if I want, necklaces that you sell because I can't visually see them. So I would then have to go all the way over here, read all of this, click necklaces, and then end up here. 
Now, I agree with you that you may not need all of these necklaces, but maybe if you feel called to it, you don't have to, we could stay with bracelets, but if you felt called to it, you just have more of a like micro collections, but everything should have meaning. So instead of having these dainty choker necklaces or like these necklaces, these don't matter. They don't have meaning. That's why they're not going to buy them. But the reason why, you know, the collaboration that you did is selling is because they have meaning to them. Like this charm necklace I'm not sure if these represent stuff. Yeah, that's her peace, love. And then the infinity sign on that medallion is another symbol for autism. And then she uses the lightning bolt in a lot of her branding. Right. So it has meaning. And that's why they're buying it. So it's a representation to them of the jewelry. They see themselves in it. When I say like we sell stuff for need, want, desire, it solves a problem. They need and want to be seen as moms of kids with autism And they also want community or people to know it. And they also like the look of them, right? So it's the same reason why women wear friendship bracelets or engagement rings, right? It's like what it represents to us and then visually to the outside world. And people may ask like, well, what does yet mean? I think that might just be the disconnect between where you were going with your jewelry in terms of it being beautiful versus having a story. Like the first one, I don't know if you see like the very first one, that one could probably stay. Because that one says United Motherhood, and the two O's on motherhood are an infinity symbol. But what if instead it was a charm that came on that was on charm necklaces? Yeah. So I'm curious if you lean a little bit. You can have a couple individual charms, but this kind of mom that you're selling to, which is kind of the Instagram younger mom, she might actually be in charms, and she's represented by more than just one symbol probably because this one is fine but this could feel like something someone gives away as like a promotional item because it says united motherhood on it it's like is it someone else's company um versus like north star represents something or someone's initial right like your kid's initial but if united motherhood was a part of a charm necklace and it was a piece and then you talked about the meaning and then they decided exact same thing that you're learning from her in terms of seeing why people want it there's just a meaning behind it and that's why they're buying it Okay. Yeah. Okay. I get that. So do you need earrings? No, you don't need earrings. I think necklaces and bracelets. Okay. And it, you can lean harder into bracelet. Because that, that's a way to clean it up too. There's, I just feel like some of those pieces are just kind of afterthoughts. But yeah, if I make necklaces meaningful, then yeah, I could see that. And I think you need to ask yourself every single time you do something for your brand is why am I doing this? Because I know we said each piece is unique, at least on the beaded bracelets, but also maybe it is a little bit more of a charm company. Every piece that you put together is unique to your own lived experience as a mother in this, right? Like we all have different kids. Like my nephew has autism, like he's 18 now and working and like, you know, it's amazing seeing his growth and where he's at. And then their experience is very different than other people's experience. So you could keep that uniqueness without it being custom. Okay. If that makes sense. So like the lucky bee charm necklace that I have, maybe just not random cute bee or charms, but something more meaningful or bring meaning to the charms. Yeah. So okay. if yeah. you create a necklace and you're like, it's got these three symbols and this is what these three symbols represent and this is the why and you tell a story around it, they will buy that necklace. What I'm really pushing Tisha into here is the idea of clarity. We talk about clarifying her message for new customers, which is one aspect of this. But there's also clarity of navigation, being clear about what products you sell, who they are for, and where you can find them. We want things to be easy for our customers. If they can't find your necklaces, they're not going to be buying them. Which begs the question, do you even need to be selling them? It's podcast recommendation time. And this month I am obsessed with the Hustle Daily Show hosted by Juliet Bennett Ryla, Rob Lit Erst, Ben Berkeley, and Mark Dent. Brought to you by the HubSpot Podcast Network, the audio destination for business professionals. 
I love their offbeat and informative takes on business and tech news. In one of the most recent episodes, they dive into how the pink Stanley Tumblr Rose is dominating water bottle sales. Thanks to internet fame, even though Stanley itself is a hundred year old company. And now you know that I've done an episode on this and I am obsessed with the Stanley story. So this goes even deeper into the Tumblr Rose color. Now, as a product boss, this is the perfect example of what can happen when you find and lean into a marketing strategy that works for you. Listen to The Hustle Daily Show wherever you get your podcasts. Hey friends, are you unsure of what to say on social media or what to even send in your weekly emails? Well, what if creating content could be easy? Would you be looking for a shortcut to creating consistent content? Yes, consistent content, because you know consistency is key. Well, let me tell you, you are not alone when you feel like you're struggling on what to post or what to write in emails. And we know that you have that product part of your business down. But as you're listening to this podcast, you probably already know that to get more people to your products, to buy your products, you need to create great content. Oh, I know, I see. I keep saying content, and that's the dreaded C word. And we can't tell you how many product bosses tell us that they wanna create great content for their audience and their customers, but they don't know what to say, or they are so busy they can't find the time, or they really, really, really don't want to be the face of their brand. Well, no worries, because that's exactly why we created a year of content. It is your shortcut to creating consistent content that resonates with your audience and brings more loyal customers who can't wait to buy your products. If you want to see how easy this is and how easy it is to create content for your audience and your customers, head to www.ayearofcontent.com. If you don't want to do the necklaces, you also don't have to. So you could lean hard and only the bracelets. But what I like is the idea of the stacks. So I also think when we're selling to them, you're talking about the sets and you're like, well, the sets don't sell as well. I think it's harder to find them. If I just land on your site and I click shop, it's taking me to this. So then you're asking me to go to your navigation and find it. And then it says one of a kind sets. And I I don't know what one of a kind means. So when we're talking about conversion, there's a couple other things you can do. There are apps like Lucky Orange and there are heat maps. Yes, I do have heat maps on my website. It's just a lot of browsing. Like you can see them scroll to the bottom. They'll click on a product. They scroll to the bottom and then they're out. Okay. So there's something that's harder. Like we're not converting them. That's what I'm saying. I think that they're kind of getting lost. So what I would do is I'd maybe clear up our navigation a bit, just make it easier for me to shop. I think instead of calling it sets, I'd call it stacks because this is like a bracelet stack. Whatever you want to sell, you show. So if you're trying to sell shop stacks or you're trying to sell the winter collection or there's some sort of feature or a new drop, this home image will change. And instead of saying, see the beauty, bring awareness to beauty and autism, I just want there to be a call to action button on the image. So whatever this image is that we're trying to sell, it says shop now, shop winter. Well, it says shop now. So it might say like the winter collection. And then there's just a really good button that says shop now. That's like a bright button. We know where to click. And it's just like shop now. And then it takes me where it wants me to go because people want to be told where to go, what to buy. But okay, so this Rifle Paper Co. one, right? They've got a lot of product. So we get the pop-up. Then this is what they're trying to sell us right now, the Rose Collection. So this is their newest pattern. So they're actually giving me two places to click. One is Meet Roses, Shop the Collection, and I could just go see everything Roses. So that would be for you, like Meet Winter or Meet Spring, Shop the Collection. And everything Spring, everything new would be shown to them. And you can still see the roses. They're not confusing customers. So confused customer doesn't buy. So we're keeping the customer focused on roses. But now they're saying shop notebooks and journals. And so if I click on this one, it's not only roses, but it's all notebooks and journals. So they're guiding the customer where they wanted to buy. And then you can see refresh your desk. So again, it's still showing us all images of roses and notebooks and journals. They're not getting us confused here. Then because they have other products, so bedding, loungewear, framed wall art, this is Rifle Paper Co. with this rug company. 
And then here is when we get to categories. You can shop stationery, notebooks, journals, desk accessories, home. Then again, they're back to this garden collection. So let's just pretend this was their website. Technically, we could have landed here. This could have been their hero image, the garden party collection, our best-selling pattern, and an array of bright bouquets and fruit. Shop now. And then I scroll, and then here's product they want me to look at, right? So they have almost like a million homepages. Yours can be way simpler, but you can just see that they're telling the customer where to go, and it's making it very easy for the customer to shop and discover. Okay. Questions about this? I don't think so. In the subscriptions, so that was something that I thought was important since I just launched it, and I do talk about it on social. So when they do click to the website, it's there. Oh, it's not even on my <laughs> not even on, that's neat. It's on the home page. Like there's a picture of it on the home page. And yeah, there it is. That it says does that mean of the job? month, but it doesn't tell me it's a subscription. Right. I have to like you're telling me who looks at something very quickly that I have to it's read this not whole even paragraph. On my site. I don't even have it until I click on the product. Okay. So note to self. So what I want you to do is I want you to think about, so this might be a really cool thing to do as a promotion. Whatever you want a customer to buy, you have to build entire promotions around it. So the product class is like a good example of our marketers. Obviously, we're teaching product piece people. But if we're running a challenge, if I have an in-person mastermind coming up, the course is available. Like whatever we're doing, we're talking about that like in exhaustion, right? In the way of, I could talk about it every single day on Instagram. I can send a million emails about it. I can be live and talking about it. It could be on my website and people will still say, wait, what's this? What are you doing? What do you have? Right? I just asked you, who's on a one-on-one session with me, if you're in a program with us and you didn't even know about that program. And it's like the thing that we anchor the whole business on. And you listen to the podcast and you paid for, you know, one-on-one. So what I want you to know is that people are not paying enough attention. And even if we market the heck out of something, they're still not paying attention. So If you launch this subscription, which is kind of like where we're at right now, we've launched the subscription, then there should be an entire campaign built around the launch of it. Your homepage here, the main image, should be like introducing the monthly bracelet subscription, something like that. Like this is not good marketing language (laughs) that I'm using. I had been using like bracelet of the month club. Okay. So on, I created, I don't have them in yet, but like little postcards that go in when they do buy it. And it says like, here's your club code. Cause I was going to do like a 10% off code too with each package. So I'm using the word club. in. Okay. So it might say like join the club, right? Okay. Or like, Hey mama, join the club. Okay. So you're identifying your customer, you're pulling her in, join the club. And now there might be a little bit more than the bracelet. Like she can get the bracelet, but what is happening? Could we give her something else? Like something that's not going to cost you a lot. Like if they join the club, do they get a newsletter that's specifically for the club of like a highlight of a kiddo of the month or a mom tip or, you know, what can we... I was going to include like a 10% off code for the site for the entire month. So every month it's a different coupon code. So in the box, they open, they get their little card. It's like, hey, here's your club code pass or I don't remember what I named it. And it's basically like a 10% off code that I can handwrite in and put on my website. And it's for the month of February only. And then when their bracelet in March comes, it's a new code in 10% off and they can use it all month long. But why do I need more bracelets, right? So if I already know I'm going to get 12 bracelets this year, there's only so many I can wear on my wrist. So you could offer that, like when you're part of the club, you get 10% off the site. And they could be, like you said, every month we'll send you like an updated code that's just for the club. And we can see if it converts for people to buy, but they may want more to being in the club, okay. more than just a bracelet. Did someone tell you they wanted you to do monthly subscription or you just came yeah. up with Yeah. Well, I had started in October. I made like, it was on a whim. It was like a fun October only bracelet. It was called the October Blackout. It was completely black with one... I think it was gold or white bead. I don't remember. Randomly placed. So that keeps it to the one-of-a-kind messaging. And that one sold over and over. Like everyone loved the October blackout. So I did a November bracelet and that one sold as well. Same thing. I did a December and it just seemed to make sense. Naturally, people liked the bracelet of the month idea. I had a few people in my DMs ask like, hey, would you ever consider a subscription? So I was just like, okay, sure. I mean, that sounds smart. So I launched it. 
And have you had people sign up for the subscription? I have. So it's only been launched for a week and clearly I'm not doing a very good job at <laughs> putting it everywhere. But I have 10 subscribers. So okay. I mean, there's someone, right? Like, and do they sign up for the year? Is it a 12-month subscription? No, it's month to month. It can be looked at in two ways. When you were launching the product monthly and it was selling, it was a product drop. So it was something new, which is why people come up with new stuff every month and then they do a whole marketing campaign around it. So we can look at your site and there's a stuff that's on it, but then you're like, ooh, new, exclusive. You can only get it in this month. So we've got time scarcity and potentially quantity scarcity. And so people want to get it and then they know it's going to be gone. So if they don't buy in that time, they're going to miss out forever. Yes. And that might be a part of what drove those sales, plus the design and the time of year and stuff. The subscription, I think test and try it. When you have a subscription, you're going to have to look at the churn rate. If it's month to month, how long do we keep them? Okay. Since you've just launched it, it's just going to be some data that you're going to analyze over the next, you know, months where you're like, how many people can I get on? And what's my lifetime value with them? How long on average do they stay with me before they cancel? Because there might be a point where they're like, I have too many bracelets. They're all the same. When I say they're all the same, they're all beaded. Yeah. And at this point, like, I don't need any more. So you're going to have to test it to see like at three months, four months, six months that they decide they don't need it. The second part is when you give them these special codes monthly, use that code only for your club members. And so you know, are they using it? And you're going to want email campaigns around it being like, hey, don't forget, you get 10% off. Did you shop the blah, blah, blah collection? But they might know like, well, I'm already paying you $20, $30 a month. I'm getting another bracelet. I don't need to shop it. I'm just going to get whatever you send me. Unless you've created desire for like a charm necklace that you came out with or a stack that they can only get. But I think what we're playing with here is two concepts of was it scarcity and a color drop, which drives Mm -hmm. purchases, or is it something that they actually need and want monthly? Does that make sense? Okay. No, it does make sense for sure. I do think it was the scarcity. Like I I tell them like, hey, December's almost over. The bracelet's disappearing from the site. Like it's not coming back. I get requests still for the October blackout or the December bracelet. And I'll post like, sorry, I, you know, I kind of make sure they know like, hey, these things are going to be asked for even after they leave the site. Time's almost up. So I do think that aspect of it helps with the sales. Which is easy for you because you can kind of just like make something and launch it and create that scarcity and desire because time scarcity and product scarcity is the thing that's going to drive people to buy stuff. Now for the subscription, where I'm going with that is that you may want to offer them something more than they're going to come for the bracelet. They're going to stay for the community. Okay. So how do we get them to stay with you longer? So you can keep doing the bracelet of the month and you're going to just see like what the churn is because it's month to month. You could stop it at any point. You know, it's not like people are doing one year memberships and you have to fulfill on it. But I just want you to gauge this as an experiment. And then you could test like if you did a newsletter once a month only to club members and it talked about a book that you loved or, you know, maybe you did a special podcast that they got. I'm just throwing like other community building ideas or yeah. There was a Facebook group. There's a lot of Facebook groups for a lot of things. But just thinking, what would she want, need, desire to stay in the club? Because no, yes, I she's going to get the bracelet, but she's actually paying for the club long term. And she doesn't want to lose that. Do you do monthly meetups? You know, it could be a monthly Zoom call that everyone in the club comes and maybe you have like a special person come in and talk, share their experience. That's what builds you bigger than just a jewelry company. I love that. I love that. We actually just started meeting in person locally with Tara. So she, her and I collaborated for Christmas party and we had like, it was decorated really cute. We had a little open bar. We had food for them and local autism moms came and met up and we all just like instantly connected because we're all living a similar journey. Um, And it was amazing. It was the neatest thing. So then we recently did like a movie night where she rented out the movie theater and local moms came and met and we all saw a movie together. So there's definitely like a desire for community in my customer base. I love the idea of offering something like that. I mean, probably not a meetup, but I don't know. I I think it's either like you do a once a month club call. Yeah. And, you know, eventually it doesn't even have to be you guiding it. Like if you grow out your team, someone else can guide it. 
It depends on how far you want to take it. There may not be an ROI on it. So the easiest thing to me would be like, you join the club and you get a newsletter and it has like a book recommendation. Maybe you found some sort of like music or technique or something that you wanted to share with them. And so the only people that get that newsletter are people in the club. And then people are talking about that. So you can go a lot of ways here. One, we've just identified the fact that they can't really see the subscription. Two, I wanted to then, if we're going to promote the subscription or the bracelet of the month club, this image up top turns into that. That's what we're going to promote for the next couple of weeks before you launch whatever's new. So like join the club and then it could be like bracelet, join the bracelet of the month club. You know, every month you get a different bracelet and however you want to say it in a less amount of words, they click on it and then they learn about it here. Okay. I can't believe I don't even have that on my homepage. It's okay. <laughs> you got a lot going on. Oh yeah. It's not even there. <laughs> and you're like, I wonder why it's not selling. <laughs> <laughs> but then you're going to send emails about it. You're going to talk about it on social media. If you have any user-generated content that you can use, so anybody else that's a part of it or that wants to show their stack, that's a big part. Oops. We're right back here to Clarity again. Now, Tisha just introduced a new subscription model to her business, but even she was having trouble figuring out how to find it on her site. I like her approach with it, and it's something she's going to have to test and try to see how long people stick around. But in order to see any kind of results, her messaging has to be clear, and her customers need to be able to find it. Daphne Oz, she has a stock that she's always wearing, and people are, this is her stock, and people are constantly asking her because she uses her arms all the time, like, what her stack is. So every so often, and it's these gold bead bracelets and she wears them all the time. And people are always asking her because they really want the look of the stacks. So for you, it'd be cool to show it incorporated with a Cartier bracelet or with other gold bracelets. It doesn't always have to be your stacks entirely. We want people to imagine, oh, Mm, this is what my bracelets look like. And then they can see how you can integrate it with the other pieces that they're wearing that are trending. Okay. I love that. Yeah. So it's less about stacks of yours, but selling it. And then when you were talking to me about Bracelet of the Month Club and all that, I wouldn't call them sets. I'd call them stacks. Then another promotion you can do is build your stack. How do you wear your stack? And then it could show them wearing them bundled like this. It could show them wearing it, you know, with other gold beaded pieces, which are the other pieces you have, like the bestie bracelets, or it could be with any other bracelet that they're wearing. Okay. And that would be a whole promotion of building stacks, right? And then it's like all about the stacks. So then your website would have, you know, build your stack. And then it would show sets and maybe bestsellers. And then they could build it up. And also, eventually, you could use user-generated content. So let's say you're selling this and you have these, which are your products. But potentially, you have some sort of mama, like, wearing it. And she shows it with, like, her Cardi bracelet. And then she's got her other stuff. You could still use some other images so people could see what it looks like together because they really just want to see it visually on themselves. So should I add other bracelet pieces to make the stack? So right now, like I just offer like the bestie and the gold beaded bracelet and then. No, I don't think you need to make more bracelets. Okay. It's not about making more. It's about showing it in different ways. Just showing it with other pieces that aren't mine. Potentially. Yeah. Does Daphne all sell it? Or does she just wear it? She just wears it and people are obsessed because they're just obsessed with her as a as a person, like in her style and stuff. Okay, so Allie Webb is the founder of Drybar and Beckett and Quill is her company too. What is Beckett and Quill? Beckett and Quill is Allie Webb's new jewelry line. Oh, she has a jewelry line. It's fun. Okay, so just for an example with this company. So you see how it's gold bead bracelet. And then you can see it like that. You can see them stacked and you see them in lots of different versions. And then people can see, oh, I can wear it with the paperclip bracelet. I can wear it stacked or it by itself. So they're just showing combos of stuff. And then people can imagine it. So we're selling the one bracelet, but then you're showing me in all these different combos. And so let's say I'm like, oh my God, I love this stack, this one. Then I know I can like actually go through it and be like, okay, she has two of these ones, she's got one here, one, one. And then that might end up getting me to go and buy that whole stack so I can make my wrist look like that. Does this make sense? Yes, it does. Okay. So I think it's just visual representation, telling people what you want them to buy, leaning into it, showing them lots of variations, 
And I think it's a good idea to show your bracelets stacked together. So mixes between them different types of bracelets, like the bestie bracelet mixed with that, stacked of the colors, and just keep showing them variations because they may not want all of the colors. So we need to show them, hey, you can wear these in all these different ways. And then if other people are posting user-generated content and someone's wearing it with their David Yorman or they're wearing it with another kind of bracelet or a watch, show those because we're not in a physical store where we could try it on and look at it on our own arm. So the more arms you show us, the more we can imagine it for ourselves. Okay. So we talked about converting the website. Subscriptions, you asked, how do I sell more? You market them. You create a whole plan around it. It's on your website. You're talking about it on social. You're sending emails about it. And they're understanding it. So I think those two feel kind of covered. But do you have more questions about either of those? No, I think we covered a lot. How do you feel? I feel good. I'm excited. Very appreciative. Thank you. It's very helpful. I think the things I will tell you is that and you're taking the photos yourself, you do really well at those. Like your photos look really good. The product is really good. And you're already making a lot of money for a new business. So you're doing a really good job and you've connected with someone naturally, but could really help boost the awareness to your brand. So you're doing so many things right. And I think it's just a little bit of cleanup, just a little bit of cleanup, really. And you're so on your way. I'm really excited about what you're going to do next. Thank you. I'm really excited. Like I've told you, like I see the potential for it to move past the autism community. I do wonder like how long do I stay in that niche? Because right now that is, I've built community there and it is really special and it's very beautiful. And I'm glad that it's connecting with people. And I've connected with one influencer very naturally. She's become a very close friend. Like she's very sweet. Would it be smart to branch out, find other influencers in the same community because long-term, I mean, really, I could pair up with any influencer who sells online and create them a specific bracelet and be like, this is the Cassidy bracelet. And she sells that to her followers. So I do see like a lot of potential growth for it. I guess I just wonder like, how long do I stay niched down, which I know is business less than a year. So I would (laughs) try (laughs) <laughs> you move as fast as I move. This thing behind me says things take the time they take. And I'm like, ah, oh, I want them to go faster. I just, I see the potential. So I'm like, okay, when do I take the next step? It will and naturally, do I even want to, you know, like it I will don't. naturally take that step. So if I okay. saw somebody wearing your bracelet and they're like, oh, it's amazing. It's not so specifically autism that let's say I see somebody wearing one of the bracelets and I'm like, that's beautiful. Where'd you get it? And they're like, oh, it's, you know, Tisha Trap. And The branding isn't even so specific autism. It's like jewelry. And then it the secondary part is jewelry with purpose. But you're not like it's for all the, you know, mamas of kids. Like it, it's not that you're so far into that world. It still looks very much like a jewelry line. It's just that your why and why you've connected with a community, they understand the why. But there is also a level of your jewelry just being beautiful and fashionable and interesting because I haven't seen bracelets that look like this very often that people are also just going to see a stack and they're like, that's a cool bracelet. Where'd you get it? Oh, it's Tisha Trap Jewelry. And if they want to go a step further and be like, she also has a story of like, you know, a mama with a kid with autism and like blah, 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 if that matters. But a lot of times people are just going to buy it because it's a beautiful bracelet. So don't push too far out of the thing that's driving your business right now. I think I want you to get very clear on how to do collection drops, how to have that core collection, how to get your website converting more often and higher, your marketing messaging, getting people to buy. And then when you start to see this business is like doing really well and things are converting, the core, the underlying, the value of your business is still going to be how it started, but eventually Like Tom's shoes, how we just went and looked at that. And Tom's has completely changed their mission. Yeah. We're going to associate the business with a mission or with values. But now they're really also just a fashion brand, right? Yeah. So keep growing. There's enough people. Keep growing on that initial community and then the word of mouth and awareness of the brand. And a lot of times, and I say it unfortunately, but like, we want to hammer home purpose so much so in the very beginning, but people are really not going to part with their dollars just because of your purpose. Cause then that's just a charity. 
what's going to happen is they're going to be attracted to something. They're going to want it for some reason. An influencer wears it. Everybody's wearing it. It's a trend. It meets a need, want, desire, or solves a problem. And then they're going to feel better about themselves because of the mission behind the business. So like it helps with that buyer's remorse. So they're always going to pick it based on like look and how it makes them feel first. first. Yeah. So keep doing that part. And then the okay. uniqueness of each piece that the pieces are all individual. And then it helps you reflect back to us that like exactly how you started this call where you're like, you know, when you've met one autistic person, you've met one autistic person. It's like, ah, it just brings an awareness to we're all individual and we're all unique. Mm -hmm. And it just kind of has that like reminder to us to carry that through in our daily lives. Okay. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah. That's good. All right. So how can we shop from you? follow you, all the things. My website is tishatrap.com and Instagram is at tishatrapjewelry. Amazing. It's gorgeous. Go shop it. It's amazing. I'm excited (laughs) to see what you do with your business. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I really do. You're great. What Tisha has going on is a really solid foundation for her business. By cleaning up her messaging so that it's clearer what people are getting, and what it stands for, she can keep her mission-driven purpose, but also broaden the audience of who her product is for. Sometimes it just takes having an outside pair of eyes to see. Is your messaging clear? Can I actually find the product you're trying to sell? And if you offer a subscription, do people know it exists? It's easy to get lost in the details, but sometimes we just have to step back and make sure the fundamentals aren't holding us back. So my friends, I hope that this was inspiring. If it was, let me know. Send me a message over on Instagram at the product boss. Or if you've loved it the way that so many of you have, would you mind leaving me a podcast review where you listen to podcasts? It would be so helpful and it would spread the word so that we can help more small product-based business owners around the world. Now, I want you to remember action takers are money makers. And also, let's just keep going and let's keep going together. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for being here and listening all the way through the Product Boss Podcast. If you love our show and it has helped you in any way in your business, would you mind doing two things for us? Subscribe to the show so you never miss an episode and leave us a review. Reviews help other product entrepreneurs know that this is the place to be to grow their businesses and realize that they're not alone. And we know that you all know that a five-star and honest review helps you sell more products to more people. So you know that your reviews help us reach more listeners around the world. Remember, what we give is what we receive. And we are all about helping each other in the Product Boss community. We are all in this together. We would be so appreciative of you if you could take the time right now to subscribe, leave a review, and even share this episode on social or someone you know so we can impact more lives. And remember, subscribing means that you will get notified each time we release a new episode so you never miss a thing. You have helped us grow and climb into the top 10 of all marketing podcasts and together we can keep climbing. Thank you, friends. And remember, there is room at the top for all of us.